So, why am I here? I mean, not here tonight, not standing on this stage in front of all of you beautiful people. Um, I found myself uh, quite a few years ago standing in a sign very much like this. And uh, at that moment in time, my focus was not so much on the here, but the are. And for the first time in my life, I realized that I really existed, that I was alive. Just like many little other people, this handsome young fellow at a tender age had dreams uh, of a world of excitement, joy, and entertainment. Yet behind that photographer-inspired smile eh, were very dark secrets that, nobody that he, all he wanted to was to escape from and didn't want anybody else to know. So it was the 70s. The Vietnam era was ending. Saturday mornings were the only thing I really looked forward to, and I found what it, out what it means to have a real crush. <laughs> I grieved every week because I watched this show, and no matter how hard they tried or whatever they did, they just couldn't get off this damn island. But, um, and it always seemed to be this one guy's fault. But anyway, nevertheless, my adventures in TV land um, helped keep the neighbor, didn't help keep the neighbor from visiting me and my daughter like intimate adults visit each other or my older brother from trying to end my life with a pillow every night with, and reckless doubts or reckless stunts that no one should walk away from during the day. On the surface, everything was okay. But at night, Richard Pryor and Red Fox taught me how to talk. And don't get me wrong, my parents did a great job. They always served the best beer, and I always bartended the best drinks. And pass, uh, pass the party favors at, or passing the party favors at the age of six was a really good job. So. I can't say I blame my dad for leaving by the time I was eight. Hell, four kids, two of which weren't his manic depressive mate, is enough for anybody to go packing. But waking up in the rooms made of giant collages from magazine clippings never stopped me from waiting at the window for my dad to show. I never seen his car come down the road, though. Somehow I survived moving around a lot and the many vacations my mom would take to the local psychiatric unit prior to my 16th birthday. Nut farm is what the kids I fought daily called it, and they knew my mom was crazy and didn't mind pointing it out to me each and every day. But when I laid my head down at night, I felt horrible for having to put my hands on people. Nevertheless, I managed to do what my childhood mentors had done. At age 19, I knew what it was like to have to buy diapers for a child that I had fathered. I nurtured and blossomed a, uh, an alcohol and drug addiction, collected many sexual trophies, and spent several days inside juvenile and adult correctional facilities. I even managed to completely ignore this doctor fellow who told me bipolar, schizoaffective, something. Anyway, that is what it felt like by the time I was 25 years old. Parole, probation, father, fatherless, mental illness, drugs, alcohol, bubble upon bubble wrapped around loneliness, blame, and never being exposed to a world outside of the ones that others had created for me. After a failed suicide attempt, I left Akron, a permanent handicap on my sister's left hand, and emotional scars that would, score, uh, that would haunt me and my mother forever. And what had happened, uh, what I had hoped for a lifestyle. And from the projects to a plane, I ended up in Orange County, California, a brand new blank cap canvas wanting nothing more than a change of paint. I didn't have much when I met him. One man who for the first time in my life said he believed in me. All he could offer was something similar to this, and I owned it. It was all I had, and he didn't care about my past. He didn't care about all the wrong, all the hurt, all the pain, just that I was going to do, just what I was going to do to create the future that I always believed was for other people. He took me under his wing and made, made an honest attempt to communicate me, with me on levels I could understand. He shared himself, and in that, I discovered that our paths, our highways, our backgrounds were in fact very similar. Even our clothes, shoes, and color of our skin were different. His simple message, you can do and become whatever you want to be, regardless of what you've been through, stepped in. So I abandoned the victim part and studied out the universal question of why for myself. What if everything I had been through served a higher purpose? I discovered that in the outward appearances, lifestyles, beliefs, cultures, and values, there exist basic human connections that are often overlooked because people just do that. How many others today are trapped beneath brokenness? What stats on mothers and fatherless children? How many, uh, how many in our penal and mental institutions? How many self-inflicted wounds can be avoided with a simple hello or eye contact acknowledging that somebody else matters? Can relationships be mended? What have you overcome in your life that somebody needs to hear? My dreamer and the person who believed in me have launched and provided more than I could ever imagine. Like this shy, beautiful girl pictured here who gave me seven beautiful children, a beautiful home, and 34 years of a life to somebody who never was shown how to love. I love you, baby. 
Once I transformed the space in my heart after being so withdrawn and selfish for years, I set out to create a space in a world for people just like me, the lost, floundering, and forgotten. Just as my heart had been once abandoned, an abandoned building in the heart of Akron would prove refuge for many just like me. Nothing, absolutely nothing, from policy to experience will ever join me in the grave. Knowing I may have more days behind me than I do in front, I set out to change communi communities outside of my beloved Akron. From developing statewide organizations, assisting others in the creation of safe spaces, to curriculum recognized nationally, this kid from the PJs of Akron, who would have died, has directly helped thousands and indirectly millions. Today, people from all over the country contact me for advice. Wow. My elbows smell of those rich and poor in spirit, finance, and resource. Lobbyist laws and legislation bear my mark, and those in the highest of the land know me by name, and they call upon me to address and to address. My oldest boys, taking care of their own children and wives today, don't recall dad as anything as other than being there. My youngest have heard, my youngest have heard I have a hard time believing that I have been anything other than a good father and husband. And they often request restaurants and events out of town because everywhere we go, it's hugs, hellos, and thank yous. I'm just an average person. I was created to crawl down into many holes just to let others know they are not alone. My smile replaces hurts. My clothing doesn't allow knife, gunshots, ghetto scars to show. I am personally possible today because one person believed in me. My name doesn't matter, and just like you, I've overcome much, and I dare you to help somebody else walk into purpose based on what you've been through.